This video takes a look at the most up-to-date IETF 16949 uh, non-conformity data as at the end of June 2021. So now, obviously, we've been through some very difficult months with uh, the COVID situation in many countries not improving. And now we see a significant amount of audits that are being done remotely. Has that had any effect on the average number of nonconformities per audit in 2021? So, <clears throat> as you know, Paul, the ITF look at um, nonconformities raised per audit. And what they're also doing is comparing um, those results in terms of remote and on-site audits. So there is a regular review and scrutinising of the um, non-conformity data. And I think if we look at um, latest information, we see on average around about four non-conformities per audit. So if we take all of the audits conducted uh, so far this year, Round about four non-conformities per audit seems to be the average. And, and obviously, that's a mix of major and minor uh, of yeah. those, maybe 5% are major non-conformities. Yeah. And has that changed significantly? If we look back to sort of 2019, 2020, as that average number of four non-conformities per audit, has that changed significantly? It, uh, not really, to be honest, Paul. It kind of fluctuates a little bit, but not uh, dramatically. I think, you know, the ITF have been monitoring, uh, th I guess, three key indicators, the number of NCs per audit, the percentage of major nonconformities, um, and the number of audits where zero nonconformities are raised. Um, okay. And there's no yeah. doubt through... Yeah, over the years of doing this, that one particularly, the number of audits with zero nonconformities has reduced significantly. Um, and that, again, now sits at around about 3% of audits uh, result in zero nonconformities. Right. So around three in 100 audits would not raise any nonconformities, but the overall average is about four nonconformities per audit. And about 5% of those, maybe one in 20, is categorized as a major nonconformity. Exactly. And yeah. Paul, you know, as, a, as an ITF witness auditor, the effects uh, witness auditing has on, on nonconformity numbers. And, and that's probably one of the most alarming things is the difference that, um, that we see in those three indicators, nonconformities per audit, percentage major and audits with zero nonconformities. The numbers change dramatically if you just take the subset of audits that have been witnessed by an IATF witness auditor. Uh, and that's the, the sort of, yeah, there's a lot of work going on in regard to that at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And I know from my background in auditing that you, you naturally you tend to behave differently when you're being observed than when you're not being observed. But I'm aware there is quite a gulf there in the number of nonconformities per audit. Uh, in the last six months, then, has there been any significant change in the top 10 major nonconformities compared with 2020? I, I would say not, Paul, really. The clauses shuffle around a little bit. Always we have right at the top 10.2.3, uh, 10.2.1, all yeah. related to, as you know, problem solving, corrective action and NC management. But the other clauses are, are the, yeah. they tend to be the same, just possibly reordered slightly. Yeah. And I, I saw the data and was interested to see that 4.3.2 related to the management of customer specific requirements that has now gone up to number six in the top 10. Yes. yes. Um, so that's obviously quite a challenge for organizations yeah. in the supply chain. Yeah. 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 And one thing that has surprised me is that contingency plan 6.1.2.3, given all the disruption that COVID has caused, maybe has not gone higher up the top 10. At the moment, it's sitting at number 10 yes. in the global major yeah. performances. And I think we can conclude that actually it has dropped down 
um, that top 10. So it is, as you say, towards the, the end, it's number 10 at the moment. But from a minor non-conformity, it's, it's much closer to the, the top of the top 10 of, of minor non-conformity. So it clearly yeah. is still a, an issue. Um, yeah, yeah. And that could be, I guess, about the organization keeping the contingency plan live updating it based upon lessons learned and yeah. we know we have the requirement in ITF now for the annual review at minimum yeah. of the contingency plan by the top management team yeah so yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not surprised to see it in the top 10 in both the major and the minor and I guess it's not surprising that we still see the control plan the top of the pile for minor nonconformities yeah and again, Paul, we talked about it before, but such an important uh, mechanism to manage risk within uh, within an organisation, and particularly around the production activity. And, and again, the ITF put some fairly stringent requirements about the amount of audit time spent in manufacturing. And so by definition, the control plan is under scrutiny uh, because the ITF mandate that minimum one third of the audit time is spent in manufacturing and, and that will involve the control plan as the main document to kind of manage risk in production. And I see number two in minor nonconformities, over 6,000 nonconformities raised so far this year around total productive maintenance. And I guess, again, with COVID, it has been very difficult for maybe external contractors to get on site to maintain equipment or even the organization's own maintenance team to yeah. do the plan maintenance. Yeah. And the impact that that has on ultimately delivery performance. So if equipment isn't available, that is a, you know, a key factor under this, this sort of clause 8.5.1.5. Um, and again, we focus on you know capacity and you know things like overall equipment effectiveness feature here as a um, as one of the ways or many organisations choose to monitor their production equipment. And as I say, we know that not having capacity is is a, a has a direct impact on being able to provide product to customers. Yeah. Which links back, I guess, to contingency plan and the risk of key equipment yeah. failure. Okay, thanks, Now That was interesting to see that really, even though we now have this approach where some audits are done on site and some audits are done remotely, it hasn't had a significant impact on the number of nonconformities per audit, the percentage of major nonconformities, and really hasn't had a significant impact in the top 10 major or minor nonconformities. Thank <laughs> you.